Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at induced nuclear fission, chain reaction, critical mass, and then we're going to finish with a summary. Nuclear fission can occur spontaneously, but can also be induced. Remember that nuclear fission is the process of splitting a large unstable nucleus into two smaller stable nuclei as well as some neutrons. Here's an illustration of the process of nuclear fission. A large unstable nucleus splits into two smaller nuclei and also some neutrons, usually two or three of them. Like other nuclear decays, nuclear fission can happen spontaneously when a large unstable nucleus decays on its own. So this process can occur spontaneously. It's not prompted by anything. However, we can also induce nuclear fission and we do this by adding a neutron in order to induce this large nucleus to split into two smaller nuclei. We induce nuclear fission by encouraging a large nucleus like uranium-235 to absorb a slow neutron to become the highly unstable uranium-236. So we start with a slow neutron and get a large nucleus such as uranium-235 to absorb it. And this produces uranium-236, which is highly unstable. The uranium-236 nucleus then immediately splits into barium-141 and krypton-92, as well as three fast neutrons. So because it's highly unstable, it will immediately split into two smaller nuclei. One of them is 141 barium and the other one is 92 krypton. This process also produces three fast moving neutrons. We say that uranium-235 is fissionable since we can induce it to undergo nuclear fission. So here's an illustration of the whole process. We add a slow neutron to the fissionable uranium-235 to produce uranium-236 which is highly unstable. And this then produces two product nuclei, barium-141 and krypton-92. We can write this out more succinctly in an equation that summarises the nuclear fission of uranium-235. So uranium-235 has a nucleon number of 235 and a proton number of 92. Then we add a neutron, which has a nucleon number of 1 and a proton number of 0, and form a different isotope of uranium with nucleon number 236 and proton number 92. This then splits to form two product nuclei, barium with a nucleon number of 141 and a proton number of 56, and krypton with a nuclear number of 92 and a proton number of 36. And we also produce three neutrons, each with a nuclear number of one and a proton number of zero. Uranium-235 can also undergo induced fission to give other isotopes of barium and krypton and a different number of neutrons. So the start of the fission process remains the same. Uranium-235 absorbs a neutron to produce uranium-236. And again, barium and krypton are going to be produced. But this time, different isotopes of barium and krypton are going to be produced. They still have the same proton numbers, but different neutron numbers. And this time, two neutrons are produced. Notice that all of the nucleon numbers sum to give 236, as expected. Now we're going to learn about the chain reaction in induced nuclear fission. The fast neutrons that are produced from induced nuclear fission of uranium-235 are called fission neutrons. So during the process of nuclear fission, a slow neutron is combined with uranium-235 to produce uranium-236. And this splits into 141 barium 
and 92 krypton and also produces three fission neutrons. Each fission neutron is capable of causing a uranium-235 nucleus to undergo nuclear fission. So these fission neutrons can themselves react with another uranium-235 nucleus to induce nuclear fission. So what these fission neutrons do is cause a chain reaction to occur. The neutrons that are produced from fission cause further fission events. So the initial process of adding a neutron to uranium-235 produces three neutrons, which can then go on to interact with three different uranium-235 nuclei, causing more fission. After n generations of fission events, the number of neutrons emitted is three to the power of n. So we can see this because in the first round of induced fission, we produce three neutrons, which is three to the power of one. Each of these neutrons goes on to induce more fission, which causes the production of three more neutrons, which means that nine neutrons are produced, which is equal to three to the power of two. And so we can see that the number of neutrons emitted is equal to three to the power of n where there are n generations of fission. And this shows that in a chain reaction, the increase in the number of neutrons is exponential. So we go from three neutrons to nine neutrons to 27 neutrons in an exponential increase. Now we're going to learn about the critical mass. This is important because not all neutrons emitted during fission may be able to cause further fission events because they could escape or be absorbed by other nuclei without causing fission. For example, we might have a fission neutron that interacts with 235 uranium, causing it to undergo fission and produce three neutrons. Two of these neutrons might go on to cause further nuclear fission. However, the third neutron could escape or be absorbed by other nuclei, and so would not cause nuclear fission. The mass of the material undergoing fission, which is the fissile material, will determine whether the neutrons escape or cause further fission. So the mass of the fissile material has an important role to play in the process of nuclear fission. In particular, the surface area to mass ratio of the fissile material determines the escape of neutrons. For example, the surface area divided by mass of a sphere is going to be less than the surface area divided by mass of a rectangular strip. This means that the larger the surface area to mass ratio of the fissile material, the more likely the neutrons are to escape. So this sphere has a low surface area to mass ratio whereas the rectangular strip has a higher surface area to mass ratio. This means that few neutrons escape in the case of the sphere. In general, they are absorbed by other nuclei and go on to cause fission. However, in the case of the rectangular strip, which has a higher surface area to mass ratio, more neutrons are going to escape the material than are absorbed. So in order for a chain reaction to occur, the mass of the fissile material must be greater than the critical mass. At critical mass, each fission event causes exactly one new fission event. So the first fission event that occurs at critical mass will produce three neutrons, two of which will not cause fission. However, one of them will go on to cause one new fission event. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or bye smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.